Why, why have you called it Havard? Our farm is called Bulchwen and Vaur, uh, and the first vowel is the seventh letter in, and so <laughs> the tradition of calling your cheese after your farm was uh, something we thought would maybe not be the most sensible thing to do, given that people might have a fear of asking for it over a counter. Lots of uh, farms uh, around Wales are called Havod. It, it's in the farming context, it means summer pasture. So part of the land that we farm is down in a local river meadow, and that, that land is called Havod. The farm is about 135 acres, it's essentially just a small hill. We're about 10 miles inland from um, the coast. My dad moved here in 1973. Um, he came here with some friends of his, and they kind of had the intention of setting up a bit of a, uh, a commune. Um, they were kind of hippies and they they very quickly all fell out with each other and dad managed to stay and he um he was a tenant farmer here we made our first batch of cheese in 2007 and um and slowly but surely built up the amount of milk we're using we're now using about three quarters of the farm's milk which equates to 31 tons of cheese a year um, yeah 65 cows so it's quite a small herd and why, why the beautiful Irish cattle? Why do you use these particular? So we've got the, 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 we're on a hill. We're we're about 750 feet above sea level here. And it rains a lot, being West Wales, and uh, part of their kind of um, uh, effort to try and farm in a most more sustainable, and, uh, low input uh, way was to try and find a breed of cow that was hardier and able to deal with the conditions here. The problem with them is they, they don't produce nearly as much milk as a Friesian Holstein, probably about half as much. But they have got a really good reputation for cheese making, but uh, it's taken us a very long time to, to actually put that into practice. So we've looked back to some of the more traditional cheddar recipes, which would have been made from milk from native breeds and uh, had a higher fat content. And, uh, it's very different from some of the Somerset cheeses, but we think in a, in a good way. We think it. We've actually got we've got um, a book um, which was written in 1917 by a lady called Dora Saker, who wrote about um, good cheddar making practice at that time, and uh, it was it was a really good starting point for us to um, to explore this old-fashioned recipe, this slower make and less temperature. Um, from that, the book is quite limited in the information and the language that's used needs a bit of interpretation so the essence of what we're doing and the essence of the kind of the older cheddar recipes is that they use less heat and they use less aggressive starter cultures less less aggressive lactic acid bacteria so everything happens a bit more slowly and do you think that's helped uh, express your your farm your your hilltop farm here in wales a bit a bit more by i think so yeah i definitely think that um when you slow things down and you don't use such um, aggressive starter cultures, uh, it allows time for the milk to develop its mm. own flavour. And uh, you know, the idea being that, that you're, you're not just um, letting the starter cultures overtake the flavour profiles of the cheese. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, we want our cheese to taste different, uh, and we we embrace the the change throughout the season or even day to day. But different good, that's the challenge. Uh, you know, it's still work in progress. I think the thing to remember with the cheddar is that each evolution takes a, a year to kind of find out what what the results will be. So it's quite a, a painful process. And you currently make the cheese with with unpasteurised milk and also cloth buying the cheese yeah. in, in a very traditional manner. Do you think that those two things make a difference to your cheese? Definitely. Yeah, I do I think that um, if you want to have a cheese that's truly expressive of the land, and you know, I think that. Um, ideally it should be raw milk um, and cloth binding I just think that um, uh, I mean if you look in our cheese store the, the wonderful um, blooms of moulds are indicative for the, they're in the air here you know that is of the place and the the, the, the flavours that are formed from the, that breakdown of enzymes under the, the rind of the skin will be you know mu you know really add to the cheese's flavours and again come from yeah. here so yeah i think it's really important to encourage those and i think cloth binding is a way of doing that and then what would you like have it to taste like what does it look like texture wise we think that the somerset cheddars are fantastic but they are a kind of slightly harder sharper cheddar and we probably want to have a slightly slightly more moist cheese that is quite mellow rich earthy buttery complex flavors we really want it to have 
a lot to say but not necessarily too loudly so long flavors that really kind of express the milk yeah. um, uh, but really kind of focus on those buttery yeah lower warm flavors that we love and that's that's where we want it to that's be well we've now gone back here at the Cockerhill Dairy um, where we like to sell them about 14 months old but it depends really so this batch was made late June and uh, we're trying to age it a little bit on the side so just have a little plug of it and see what it tastes like and we compare it with a, a we've got two made in the same week that we've selected out as two two real nice batches that we'd like to sell to our customers No, that's that's exactly what I'm looking for from that cheese. Just nice, gentle tang to it. Nice, warm, roundedness to it. And just comes through really well. But we've got one here made just a couple of days earlier. Again, the batch that we've been down and chosen on is one that we really, really like. The last one was a touch drier. This one is a so just only a couple of days in it, made in exactly the same week. That's really what I'm looking for. So not not as tangy, not as upfront as the other one we had. Just a bit more warmer, a bit more rounded, a bit more full of flavour. Real nice long length of flavour. I'll still be tasting that when I'm driving home tonight. That's exactly what I'm looking for from a Howard Cheddar.